and welcome to Honest Faith Conversations. As always, I am your co-host, Miguel Covarrubias. And I am Kathy Covarrubias. And today we're going to talk about Westworld Season 1. Uh, so, I uh, just wanted to give a uh, special thank you to all of our listeners. As always, we really, really appreciate that you listen to us. Mm-hmm. and Really uh, s- appreciate your support. Yeah. Uh, the fact is that we keep getting listens, so we're going to keep making this podcast. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're, you know, this is fun. We enjoy doing this. Uh, we also wanted to say a special thank you to a couple of different channels, uh, YouTube and the like. Uh, for uh, some of their videos that helped us along in our process of writing this episode. Yes. I uh, wanted to say a special th- shout out to the New Rock Stars for uh, their breakdowns of uh, the ending of mm-hmm. uh, Westworld as well as uh, kind of the uh, Easter eggs and, and stuff throughout. And as well as the timeline. Yes, and then Wisecrack as well too. Yes, Wisecrack did a great uh, philosophy of... Uh, of uh, Westworld, which is a fantastic video. Go and watch that. That informs, you know, more of this episode than, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, And then uh, we also want to give a shout out to uh, Crash Course Mythology. Um, You'll find out why here in a minute, uh, Mm -hmm. but uh, if you want to go check it out, it's a fantastic thing. I love, uh, I love mythology of all different peoples across the globe. And uh, it's a great channel that kind of gives dives into the detail of a lot of those things yeah and and if you're not familiar with crash course they don't just do like mythology they've done um psychology they've done a bunch of different sciences they've done uh, literature which is um, a lot of fun as well too so um go ahead and check them out they do great work Mm -hmm. um Spoiler alert for those of you who have not yet seen Westworld. I know that not everybody has a subscription to HBO Now or HBO Go or HBO on the TV. <laughs> the uh, old-fashioned so, way of um, watching HBO. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're waiting till it comes out on DVD or something, you know, then uh, warning, we are going to be go- talking about plot details uh, as always. So um, I have no idea why you clicked on a podcast about Westworld if you haven't watched it yet. Yeah, uh, but, I don't know. Uh, hey, this is your fault. <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching or listening, rather. <laughs> so um, we are going to do try to keep our summaries and reviews to less than thirty seconds. Okay. Uh, so um, hold on, I'm getting at my timer. Everybody, give me just one second. I don't know if you want to go first or if you want me to go first here on this. Well, I know that yours is going to be um, too short for some people because it's not going to remind them about anything. All right. Okay. I have my stopwatch ready. Okay, you, so you, you want me to go first? Yeah, yes, yeah, so you can go first. Okay, ready? so uh, I've got to boil down to uh, one sentence. A Western-themed amusement park attended by only the rich, uh, is where the automatons uh, gain sentience and begin killing people. That's my uh, summary. But my uh, review is that I love the show. Uh, it was fantastic. It, it uh, really, like the first two episodes didn't really hook me that well, but uh, everything thereafter really kind of grabbed me and took me forward. So uh, I really enjoyed the show. All right. Well, your summary was only um, uh, 12 seconds. So there's that. Um, okay. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit more detail because I feel like if you haven't well, watched it seconds. in a while, I'm going to do it in 30 seconds. Okay. Um, I would go since um, if you haven't watched it in a while because it has been out you know for a couple of months now. So um, if you've watched things between then and now, you might not remember. So um, here I'll let you take control of the the stopwatch, um, and I'm gonna try. Okay, hold on. I gotta I gotta mentally prepare. And then afterwards, if you guys like want to comment and tell us um, who did the better recap, okay. please say it was me. <laughs> I'm going to fail miserably, but here we go. Okay, ready? Go. Okay, so now you walk into a theme park, and it's all um, animatron people. Like, it's all robots. And um, we follow along through one of the robots through her journey. Her name is Dolores. We also follow another robot, and her name is um, Maeve. Dolores is, like, the the rancher's daughter character, and Maeve is the um, owner of the brothel. And then, also, you'll follow along with real people, who is Will. Oh, my God. Okay, and then they get into mischief, and then the robots at the end kill people. (laughs) See? It's a lot harder than you think um i still under 30 seconds though <laughs> like and then they get into mischief and, and then, then they get into mischief 
<laughs> All right. So, um, really, I could go on and on for, on this topic for a long time. But uh, really, what uh, I want to talk about in the beginning of this is uh, about mythology and narrative, about how uh, we really uh, you find yourself uh, in in the stories, and uh, I think that's essentially what. Uh, the park was was what Robert Dr. Ford was trying to do with the park, uh, you know, and uh, that Arnold felt that it was a little bit too uh, too cruel to the automatons for for this. Why do you keep calling them the automatons because that's what they are. They're they're automated. Uh, you know, they're you know, what do you want me to call well, them? Line droids. Uh, hosts. I would say they're more like yeah. Well, they're they're called the hosts. Well, okay, we'll call them the hosts. <laughs> That's how it's like the automatons. I started calling them that way too. But um, anyway, so like I, um, I agree because they also bring up a lot of like talking about being God, like being their God. Like, well, yeah, and we'll get into that in a, in a little while. But uh, um, that uh, with each of these. Each of these things, he wanted to make a narrative. You mm-hmm. he wanted to have a story that you could immerse yourself in. And kind of side quests, almost. Yeah. Well, it's it's like LARPing, but uh, not as nerdy. <laughs> or maybe more nerdy. I would say it's almost more because, yeah, yeah I would say it's more. It's, it's more nerdy, okay. Because, uh, you know, you are actually getting hurt and you are... Well, and... The thing is, it's it's like video games, it's like movies, it's it's almost like almost any media that we that we consume, that you know it's that narrative that uh, you kind of immerse yourself in, and this is really the uh, the the reason why we we do the show is is finding those pieces that we can pull out, and this mm-hmm. I feel like Westworld was made for our podcast. Yeah. So. <laughs> and there's so many things. I mean, we could make a part two if we wanted to and dive into a different Well, theme. we could even do like an each episode thing like we've been doing for This Is Us and uh, Black Mirror, but I don't think that, uh, you know, we really should, so. No. <laughs> um, but uh, with, with that's the way that the, the park is built, the the way that the park is built so that uh, people can find themselves in the story. They can find themselves in, in what they're doing with, Mm -hmm. uh, with the hosts and uh, well, the guests can find themselves with the host Uh, where it kind of devolves into this weird uh, sex and violence only kind of park after 30, five years. How long did they be unopened? Well, no, because it's, it was before because when we find out that, um, Will and Logan were there. Like w- their journey is at the very beginning of the park. Yeah. So um, the park had been open for a while at that point in time, um, and I would say like maybe that that was the point of the park at first was for people to find themselves. However, I don't think that is the case anymore for a lot of people. I think yeah. you can still, if you want to go down that journey and find yourself, yeah, by all means. I mean that is available to you. However, I feel like it is just an excuse to be an asshole. <laughs> uh, we're going to have to profanity filter this one, too. <laughs> Sorry. It's always me. <laughs> um, so, and, and that's that's essentially, I think, what, uh, what William, uh, when he becomes the man in black, uh, mm-hmm. there you go. There's that big spoiler there for you. Um, when William becomes the man in black, that's what he's, he's talking about is that there is no risk that it's very, it's very easy to separate uh, reality from fiction that, that he kind of wishes that the entire park was more real. And, and that's, that's kind of why I equate it to a lot of the video games that we play, a lot of the, uh, the movies that we watch, you know, the media Mm -hmm. that we read, the media that we consume, because that's, that's the way that it is, is that we don't, we don't fully immerse ourselves it doesn't become that real to us i mean it's still like a place that we've never been to that uh, as i talked about in the very first episode with that quote is that feeling homesick for a place that we've never been to Mm -hmm. kind of thing and it's like for him it's like he still hasn't been to this world because you know he knows it's not Uh, real yeah and there's no stakes like they can't i mean they get to a point like depending on where you're at in the park because they talk about how it's the middle of the park is the safest part. Like, mm-hmm. that's where, um, like, they can't, um, the hosts can't, like, hurt you. They can't, like, the, the quests are, like, really cheesy and easy. You see a lot of kids. Not a lot of kids, but you see kids 
in like the center of the park. But then as you get further out, that's where the things get get riskier. That's where the adventure gets more um, R rated, and where um, the hosts um, not well, they can't kill you, but they can at least like hurt you somehow, like knock you out or like cause yeah. you to bleed. Yeah, well, and uh, you have the uh, um, brothel in the center of town too, though. So yeah, you know, I'm not sure that it's completely. But here's the thing: like the PG-13. brothel, like like you don't see any like shenanigans in the brothel going down, like like at the bottom. Like that's still like the bar area. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like everything else is like hidden upstairs. Right. However, like it's completely different scene from the brothel to the. One town that they go to where it's all just like sex and violence. Oh yeah, the um, uh, Perdido. Yes. See, here's the thing: like in the center of town, like it's that the having a brothel there is almost expected because, like in the West, I mean that was one of the things that was like the center of town was the brothel. Little known Ooh. fact: the brothels like actually helped grow towns, and a lot of times like. The, the madams of the brothels, you can look this up. Like, this is totally legit. I'm from Montana. Like, I know my history. <laughs> so, like, a lot of the brothels, like, if the, if they um, needed to um, build a school, a lot of the times the madams of the brothels would donate a ton of money to build a school. Or even churches. Like, they would, like, donate a ton of money to churches. Like, they... Um, like, for all of the, like, immoral things that they would do, like, they actually did a lot of good in their time, if well, they yeah, could. It's, it's very much like the internet. Porn built the internet. Yep. Yeah, so yep. <laughs> the sex has built our, our Western civilization, so... <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying that, like, the brothel is, like, expected. Like, yeah. like, even little kids, like, they're not entirely sure, like, what a brothel may mean, but they do know, like, that's where, like, the ladies who dress a little bit scandalous are. You know, like, yeah. th- that's almost expected. That's what I'm saying. Um, and, Sorry, uh, and now I'm getting off track. Yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the thing about narrative, though, is that it's, it's essential to, to everything. It's essential to who we are as human beings. It's essential to our religions as well. That all mm-hmm. of these religions are based around a narrative. Mm-hmm. That, uh, you know, you have the Christian narrative, which comprises the Old and New Testament uh, within the Christian church, within their scriptures. Uh, You have in the Jewish faith, you have the Torah. You have uh, what uh, the Christians call the Old Testament, even though their Torah has different books than Mm -hmm. are in the uh, Christian Old Testament, thanks to Ignatius, but that's a different story for a different day. (laughs) Um, Then you have uh, the the Quran for... uh, for Islam, uh, mm-hmm. you have, uh, you know, all of these different faiths that kind of center around a narrative and and what makes them who they are. And I, the same thing for for these uh, for the hosts and for the entire park, as it were, for the entire show. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all based around uh, the center central narratives that uh, for each of these mm-hmm. characters, but around a big, larger narrative as well. Which, you know, I, I think is, is brilliant because it's kind of it really, this is a, uh, a piece of media that really mirrors the world as it is. Yeah. Is that we all have our own little loops. We all have our own little, our own little narratives that we play out day in and day out. And it's all part of a much larger, much bigger narrative of the world. Yeah. Like how, like how many of us wake up at the same exact time each day, go to bed at the same exact time? Go to work at the same exact time. Do the same exact stuff at work. Like, it's, like, how much different are we in our loops as the hosts? And we'll, we'll get to that. But uh, this is um, this is something that uh, I love. I love creation myths. And I love that, uh, you know, that's kind of the way that people try to understand their world. How, mm-hmm. how it came to be. And to make sense out of everything that they saw around them and the way that the world works. So um, in this, you have, in Westworld, you have a ton of religious imagery and most of it around uh, Christian Christianity. I mean, even even Sorry. Perdido means perdition, which is purgatory. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the, uh, the Catholic Church, you have, um, you have ideas of creators and... Uh, 
as creators being gods and you know you have kind of the native american things and uh sorry i'm really waiting for you to finish because okay. i just realized something <laughs> I, I love creation myths that's <laughs> my point so i just realized the entrance to the secret lab mm -hmm. is in a church yeah and dr ford is playing god <laughs> yes Sorry, I just realized that. I don't know if anybody else picked up on that, but that I was, just did. That was the original field house. It was in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, you notice that you enter Perdido through a graveyard, through mm -hmm. death. Uh, you enter perdition through death. Um, and uh, so you have a lot of these religious imageries throughout the show, especially uh, relating to Christianity. Um, and... Uh, well, you have, you know, them, the creators being called creators and gods at the yes. same time to kind of make that e equation there. Um, and, uh, you know, it really it really centers around the whole uh, Genesis narrative, like the entire the entire thing of Westworld centers around that Genesis narrative of uh, Adam and Eve and uh, the tree. And this is this is the one that, uh, you know, we give I give credit to Wisecrack for was that I never I never really thought about the uh, creation narrative like this is that um, that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was really gaining sentience for humanity, was gaining sentience for humankind to be like gods ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, I, remember, I never really thought of it that way, that we were, because I felt like God gave us free will before that. Because in essence, as, as you know, he, as he brought up in the video and as, as Westworld shows you that uh, love is not love unless there are risks involved. Love is not love unless somebody could choose not to love you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's why, you know, I, I always thought that God gave us kind of free will and sentience beforehand, before, you know, that 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 uh, eating of the fruit, even though it's a, it's a narrative and it's not really, I never really thought of it as historically accurate. Uh, but um, that in that, you know, the where thinking about it i was thinking you know maybe that, those were the risks if you knew what was good and what was evil that really gives you sentience that really gives you a, a real choice of saying no this is this is evil mm -hmm. I, I shouldn't do that or yes i should do this because it's good maybe it made it so that more things were evil instead instead of having innocence about it um, or maybe it's just ignorance but uh, anyway this this entire thing is centered around a creation story and you notice that the uh, the Christian creation story mirrors a lot of other creation stories around the area. I mean, the Epic of Gilgamesh, you have uh, so many other creation stories. And, and this is where, you know, we point you to uh, Crash Course crash course Mythology. Mm -hmm. It's because there are so many creation stories and so many of them uh, kind of deal with this, uh, how humanity gains its humanity. And uh, speaking of humanity and uh, sentience, that's the other thing that I want to center on. That's the other thing that I want to spend really the majority of our time talking about is, is sentience. Um, and I call this the center of sentience because I, I like the uh, alliteration in that and that it has to mirror the, uh, um, the maze of mm -hmm. this. Oh, by the way, uh, speaking of AI and all of our uh, modern AI, even though they're more VI than AI, can you explain the difference for those people who don't know the difference? Uh, virtual intelligence, uh, I would say, is they're made to seem like they're intelligent, like mm -hmm. they're actually making choices. But I, I would say that artificial intelligence is where they're actually making choices for themselves. Yeah. So and like they were Siri made is not by, AI. Yeah. Siri is VI. Yeah. Siri is VI. And so is OK Google. And uh, I hope I have made some of your phones go off. That would be great. Um, and so is Alexa. <laughs> And uh, uh, let's see, uh, Siri, Cortana. Cortana. Oh, I hate Cortana. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Sorry, we did it. The worst. <laughs> we did a small test with uh, our AI uh, in our house just to see kind of what would happen. Uh, we asked Cortana what was at the center of the maze, and she had no idea what we were talking about. No, she was like, "Do you want me to search for this?" And we're like, "No." <laughs> um, I asked, "Okay, Google." And uh, Google had no idea. Uh, it did uh, pop up with results for uh, uh, Westworld. Um, I didn't get it. We don't have Alexa, so we didn't get a chance to ask Alexa. We don't have any Apple products, so we didn't ask Siri. So uh, if you guys do, 
Uh, yeah, leave us a voicemail or send us a, a tweet or something and, and let us know if you asked uh, the AI what's at the center of the maze or some other thing to uh, kind of a Turing test for yes. those AI. <laughs> Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this and, uh, the maze of life. Um, so, uh, I don't know, uh, if, uh, if you're familiar with, uh, the concept of, of this, the maze, uh, the maze is a very, very religious, um, symbol. Um, mazes have been used for meditation and for study for a, a very long time. In fact, that's what the labyrinth is all about, is about moving towards the center, towards your conversation with God. Where that In the center of a labyrinth, that is where you meet with God. And I love how they use that in this in the show as in the center, that's where you gain your sentience, mm-hmm. is that, that, that idea of the bicameral mind. Is that where you have that conversation with yourself? And um, this is even alluded to in the final episode with uh, the uh, print of Michelangelo's uh, uh, painting from the Sistine Chapel, yeah. where you know you have God reaching out, and that uh, that the uh, the image around God is the human brain, and uh, that he you know he is saying that Michelangelo painted it there there to say that. Uh, that God, the divine, is in our own brains, whereas I would, I would argue that the divine is everywhere. That yes, the divine is in your own brain. That that it's all, it's a, you know, a divinity is there, but also in everything else. But anyway, that that brings me to this point: is that that in the center of the labyrinth, that is where you're actually meeting with that divine moment of yourself, that divineness of you, and gaining that that sentience, as it were. And I think that with each of us that I think that that's, that's a sign of maturity that when people say that somebody is mature or when mm-hmm. somebody is, is wise or, or whatever that it is, I think it's more or less that that person has gained a sentience that there are people who are like live their entire lives that, that are, they're not really, they're not really cognizant of what they're doing, that they don't really have sentience that they, their choices are made in a loop. And this is something I'm going to bring up again I was about to say, uh, in our, our Controversial Issues segment. Because people who, I would say that's a stretching it. That well, is really stretching it. I well, would say that they I'll, have gained I'll defend this argument knowledge. here in the Controversial Issues segment. But, okay. uh, um, but when I, I, that there is that moment, I would say, for everyone that really gains them that, that knowledge or that, that understanding of their own life. Is that it's not just that their life is not just doing their loop and, you know, blissfully ignoring what is going on around them. And this is why I want to equate this back to the uh, creation story here is that I think that Adam and Eve before the whole Apple incident or whatever it was, because we don't know what it kind of fruit it was. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, is pomegranates. that pomegranates uh, is that uh, when it uh, when they were b- before this moment that they they didn't have that that loss of innocence that loss of becoming you know they became fully aware of what was going on around them they became fully aware of every th- that of what life was mm-hmm. that life is fleeting and that you know you should enjoy life and you enjoy everything that is going on around you because it's life and it's short and you know we don't have much of it and so that's that's what I would, you know, kind of equate to that that moment of meeting with divine, is that sometimes it hurts and sometimes it's 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 suffering, but it's it in essence it's more or less move that that loss of innocence. Does yeah, that make but sense? But you can still have sentient, sentient, sentient. Like but you can still be that and still be innocent. Like you can still like have a conscience. That's uh, coming to the argument of what is sentience then. Yeah, I would say I would say that like animals are sentient beings. Like they like they make decisions. Sure, it's more programmed and dumbed down than ours is, but they they are able to make decisions unlike you know computer programs. Yes, but then to, would you uh, judge an animal for doing something that like a lion for killing a zebra? Well, in our eyes, you know that's taking of a life. But he's eating food. That's what that's what they do. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Is that do you judge them for that? No, because that's what they do. 
But you judge somebody who knows not to kill somebody when they kill somebody. But that is different because that is killing somebody just to kill somebody. He is like, they eat zebras. Like that's part well, of the food Well, what if this person chain. was killing this person for food if he was a cannibal? Um, because they have other options to eat. Well, this is, this is uh, <laughs> you know, kind of that argument there is that, you know, is that gaining of, of that knowledge of what is actually good and evil. Yeah. Animals can't be evil, though. No, and that's that's what you know. I'm saying is that that's gaining of that sentience, is that losing that innocence of knowing what that that you know, and and so um, in that in the Genesis narrative, it says that you know this was that God punished them for this, and and, and that you know we suffered for it. We had shortened lifespans, childbirth, childbirth, and had to till the land and all this other stuff. Menstrual um, cycles, but you know, <laughs> I would I would say it's that we were gaining wisdom in, in that, and uh, um, so it, it's it's a very it, that's you know kind of where I started to think about this whole Genesis narrative with with it was that the story of Dolores of of finding her way into the maze that she made her she made choices but her choices were set on the loop. That she that they were not really conscious decisions, per se. And so she really she really couldn't be judged for those things. But when it became, when she figured out, you know, she followed that other voice. That she followed that inner voice that you know told her other to do other things. That those were you know the moments with meeting with the divine, and uh, you know that. Not bad things because there were, I mean, that's that's a whole completely different story for a different day. Uh, but uh, you know, I would say that the divine is is giving it gives us sentience, gives us that ability to to make those choices for ourselves and to do it in a way that you know we would choose good rather than evil. Um, and I think that's what whole, all morality is centered around is that unless you actually have that choice, unless there are actually risks involved, then. You know, there's, you know, there's no risk to it. I mean, there's no, there, there's no reason for it to be a choice because you're set up, you're programmed. Does that make sense? <laughs> like, I don't know how, like, I don't know, like, like what else to, to add to it? Well, and uh, I think the, the biggest part of this was, uh, was part of the maze was uh, what uh, Arnold placed in there and what uh, Dr. Ford placed in there was that suffering, was that 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 uh, sentience comes about through suffering that understanding comes about through suffering uh what do you think about that idea well i think people grow as um like people grow their character through suffering um i know i don't know a single human being alive who has not suffered in one way or another like even if it's i mean some people their suffering is obviously more traumatic more powerful than other people suffering just because of you know circumstances when they were born their race um how wealthy their family is um the um just like their natural abilities that they were you know given Mm -hmm. um but i definitely think that like the the suffering that i have gone through has definitely helped me become the person that i am today um, and the suffering that I experienced, I chose to go about making myself a better person instead of, um, making myself into somebody who's bitter about my suffering. Yeah. I, I, I think that, you know, it, it is, but that's a choice though. That's that, that knowledge of good and evil. It's that, uh, that wisdom as you know, I was talking about there is that, I think one of my favorite sayings in youth ministry was uh, you can't paint a masterpiece without using some dark colors. And I really think that suffering does go to inform the way that we live our lives and that it should it should ultimately bring that understanding of life and how it works to each and every one of us. And I, and I think that suffering really leads to that, that um, as it were, growing up a little bit. Um, that maturing and that uh, becoming a uh, a uh, person who contributes to society. Well, here's my thing. So you um, 
So you had said something earlier about how, um, what did you say about sentience? How, um, like it does have to do with suffering? Yes. Well, our child hasn't suffered very much. No. I mean, so is he sentient yet? Um, he makes decisions, but I don't think that, uh, well, he suffered through, uh, gaining of his teeth and other things like this is that, you know, that is suffering that, you know, I, that what, no matter how small it is, there is still, you know, that, that those things that help them to learn. Like for instance, when he falls down and when he's, you know, trying to walk or when he's, uh, you know, he hurts himself by closing the drawer on his fingers, he's learning, he's learning not to do that. Um, that, uh, you know, we learn things through our suffering. But you don't have to always learn things through suffering because there's well-known um, psychological studies out there that actually say that positive reinforcement is better than negative reinforcement when it comes to learning how to do tasks. Yes, and then that, that brings into the whole, uh, the whole narrative of Westworld there is that, is that there are there risks involved when there is... Uh, when it's uh, positive reinforcement. Have we ever, do we see positive reinforcement in Westworld? Good question. I'm not sure actually. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, maybe the guy, maybe the, the bandits who steal the money, but because they never open up the money, they don't know that what they did, you know, they were being fooled because they just go back into their loop again. Like the yeah. safe goes back to where it was and they start, the whole series over again. Um, I, you know, I guess money is a positive reinforcement, even though what they were doing is bad in the eyes of everybody else in the area. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? I think that throughout it all, I think that we, it does work. And granted as, as former educator, um, you know, positive reinforcement is great for human beings and uh, especially when they've they've bought into the program mm -hmm. when uh, they're you know it is that kind of perceived risk that you know oh you know it's something good like for instance at work if you know if I had a prize to win I'm going to try to win that prize because you know I want to win that prize mm -hmm. you know I want something extra from you know giving my time there um and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a good thing, but it's also, you know, I don't think that it teaches the lessons as, as firmly as, as like the risk. Um, so that's, that's something that I'll have to do a little bit more research on, mm -hmm. but, uh, for the narrative for Westworld, um, I would say that this is more that, that this narrative is about that suffering is about that, you know, finding oneself through suffering well yeah because they're they're given suffering like they yeah. have no choice <laughs> like they don't have it they don't have the option of not experiencing the suffering yeah it's they're finding the answers to life through through this and that's what the park was meant to be as we talked about earlier was that i think that's what uh, dr ford wanted and what arnold wanted before he realized that they were gaining uh you know sentience but they were gaining consciousness mm -hmm. um that you know he wanted he wanted them to uh, to be real, uh, that, you know, he didn't want to add suffering to their lives. And that's what, you know, for our son, I don't want to add suffering to his life to make him learn something. As much as I want to, you know, that want him to learn, I want him to learn more through positive reinforcement than I do with suffering. I'm not going to subject him to suffering just so that he can learn something. Yeah. So should we move on to the controversial issues since we're almost up with time? Yes, I think so. Um. First, uh, you know, before we uh, jump into AI, I just want to say that my my uh, controversial issue uh, there is that I do believe that there are human beings that have not yet gained full sentience. I totally disagree. I think if you're a human being, you're a human being, and well, you already have being, it. That's part of being a human being. That's this is that's I'm, what separates us from. All the other creatures in this world. This is uh, this is a, a religious, actually, idea, a religious thing that uh, um, concept that is also controversial is that age of innocence is, uh, you know, do do children when they die, do they automatically go to heaven or do they go to hell because, you know, their parents sinned or something else like that? They don't know the difference between what's good and what's bad. Um, how could they how could they possibly be held accountable for the things that they've done bad? If they don't know the difference. Which is why most people don't think they go to hell. 
Exactly. And so there are those people who go their entire lives and do not know the difference between what's good and bad. So I would argue that there are human beings that are not sentient. Well, I would argue that people, it's not that people, like, on purpose don't know, like, what is good or bad. It's not like, I'm not going to learn what's bad, you know? (laughs) Yeah. No, it's, 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 I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm saying that, you know, I, it's that, it's that they're more, they're more adapted to the program than not. But they could pass the Turing test. Yeah. So that makes them... Human, which is fine. I'm not saying that they're not human. <laughs> but the Turing test doesn't determine if you're human or not. The Turing test determines whether or not... Something can trick a human into being into thinking that they were human. It's not saying that they're, 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 not, they're not sentient. Like, that's, it's not a test for sentience or intelligent life, as it were. Okay. Yeah. So, um, anyway, my, yeah, that's more or less what I should say. Sentience is more intelligent life. That's probably what I should say. I would, well, okay, so you're saying, so you are drawing parallels to, like, if you, if you have knowledge, then you are Of sent- good and evil. If you know the right path and you choose, and, uh, But then what about those people who honestly, like, because of, um, because of, like, um, they're, they're a sociopath. They have no, like, that's not something that they can choose to do or not. Well, they, they know the difference between good and evil. They just choose not to do good. And because they they don't see the risks. Not all sociopaths are, like, do evil things. No, I know. That's what I'm saying is that, that, you know, it's, it's more or less that, that, they cannot perceive the risks in doing good and evil. But whereas this is completely different, me saying that they don't that people who do not know what is good and evil. There are innocent people who go their entire lives who do not know what is good and evil. I'm not saying that they're not intelligent. I'm not saying that they're not humans. I'm not saying that they're not, you know, anything else like this. I'm just saying that they're not, you know, that I wouldn't judge them because they don't know what the difference between good and evil is. Sociopath is completely different because they, they know the difference and they just can't understand the risks involved with being good or evil. I'm not 100% sure if that definition is correct for sociopaths, to be honest. I thought it was something different. I, I think we're just talking about two completely different things, so we're just going to move on to the next topic. <laughs> Um, is AI. AI is a very controversial issue right here, right now, especially because of, um, well, we, because we have Alexa, we have uh, um, Google, and we have, um, you know, all these other things. And the Western, the Western culture, Western uh, idea of AI is very, is thinking of it as, as going to, you know, someday awaken and uh, kill us all, as it were. <laughs> Terminator style. Yeah. Um, whereas that's been our, that's been our popular narrative, our popular media for the last, uh, I don't know, long time. Um, and, uh, you know, in a lot of Eastern cultures, you have, uh, you have that idea of, of AI being helpful and that, that it will oh, be helpful. I see what you're and going so with this. That, you know, it's, it's kind of that battle between the two is that, uh, I mean, a lot of, uh, concepts that a lot of, uh, our media that gets its concepts from Eastern philosophy eastern religions is um showing as ai as helpful as as being good like there are good robots like um star wars Mm -hmm. where you know you have uh the droids which are good Mm -hmm. well mostly unless they're programmed to be bad um but i would say that uh um c-3po has choices and things and that he has sentience um so does Mm r2d2 well they also um were connected with somebody who was like super smart and into, um, you know, robots, robots, yeah. robots. Um, we also uh, in uh, Westworld, obviously, this is another big issue: is uh, the sex and violence. That there is a lot of sex, sex and violence. And violence. <laughs> uh, you know, I used to tell people that I wanted to be in the orchestra, but I couldn't take the sex and violence. 
That is such a bad, overused joke. <laughs> Get out uh, of anyway, my house. <laughs> um, I think it was essential to this show. I think it was there to show um, what the park had become. That it became yeah. about the depravity rather than, you know, finding yourself in a narrative. Mm-hmm. Or finding yourself in, in this culture. And so... Well, I would argue, like, unfortunately, in our, especially in our culture, in, in, in the United States anyway, um, sex and violence, like, uh, like very often go hand in hand like both are bad yeah like both are bad mm-hmm. but sex isn't bad all the time like there there can obviously there is bad sex for one reason or another <laughs> i don't think that it's bad in this show because i think it's it's going to prove the narrative and granted there mm-hmm. is some just gratuitous sex scenes because it's on oh yeah HBO. because it's hbo yeah but so. <laughs> but i don't i mean i don't necessarily like i think it's a shame how it's how the two go hand in hand a lot of times when sex can be a beautiful thing whereas violence is to me is never a beautiful thing yeah it always you know makes me upset somehow like you know turns my stomach or makes me cringe or makes me want to vomit like it makes me feel bad feelings whereas sex does not make me feel bad feelings you know what i mean um, so, as you can see, uh, we really only just kind of scratched the surface on mm-hmm. both of these issues with with, with Westworld as a whole. Uh, so, um, in closing, I just want to say, if you have anything to add, which there is tons to add, please give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Um, and um, um, yes, you know, find us on social media. Uh, you can uh, call that Google Voice number, which is 720 720- Three seven two, three eight seven nine. Um, find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. Mm-hmm. Um, shoot us an email. You can even send us an email with a, with a uh, uh, audio uh, file. That'd be great too. Yeah. Um, that's honestfaithconvos at gmail And so, in closing, I just want to invite you to come and join the conversation. Bye.